Welcome everybody. My name is Autumn Cumlin. I'm the clinical dietitian here at the hospital and tonight we're going to be talking about clean eating. So clean start, eat clean, and live well. So from the social conscious food movement of the 1960s all the way to the growth of the organic food market that happened in the 1990s to now this current decade's focus which is on clean eating, the roots of the clean eating movement does run deep. So the foundation is choosing foods in their whole food state or as close to possible as they're found in nature. But beyond that definition, there seems to be room for interpretation. So we have found, uh, looking at many different um, pieces of literature and research, there is many different aspects of what people think clean eating is. So for some, they think that it's only whole foods is clean eating. For others, looking at minimally processed foods being acceptable and just avoid, avoiding the highly processed foods that have the extra sugar and unhealthy fats with them as well as any additives or artificial sweeteners or ingredients. Um, others would say clean eating, recommend a vegan or vegetarian diet would be would fit in that category. So also organic food, grown or made with no pesticides, hormones, or GMOs are part of the clean eating plan for many as well. And then overall, choosing local and in-season produce seems to be a trend. So we'll start at the beginning. You probably most of you are familiar with the Dirty Dozen. Okay, talking about um, the more the organic phase of things, um, having the least amount of pesticides to them. So these are the top 15 or so, or the Dirty Dozen, the 15 we'll do next, the Clean 15. But the Dirty Dozen, the top dozen of them that have the highest levels of pesticides in them. So saying when you go and buy it at the grocery store, these are the ones when they rank against all other fruits and vegetables would be highest. So go down the list for you, but apples, celery, cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, grapes, hot peppers, nectarines, but more specifically looking at imported nectarines, peaches, potatoes, spinach, strawberries, and then some that are been added to the list, sweet bell peppers, kale and collard greens, and some squash. So if you are really concerned about wanting to cut down the uh, risk of the pesticides that you might be consuming, these would be the top ones that you'd want to purchase organic and then not worry so much about the other ones. So that's where the thought of the dirty dozen come from. Now the Clean 15, these are the ones that are saying, you know, for conventionally produced food products, these are pretty similar to organic, so those would be the cleanest ones to buy if I'm not doing organic in those cases for these. So asparagus, avocados, cabbage, cantaloupe, sweet corn, eggplant, grapefruit, kiwis, mangoes, mushrooms, onions, papayas, pineapples, sweet peas, frozen for example, and frozen, uh, sweet potatoes as well. So those are the, the clean top 15 ones that you could buy conventionally. So looking at clean eating and what it means. There are many reasons why um, dietitians, registered dietitian <coughs> nutritionists would hesitate to use the term. Because as we said, the, the definition leaves some interpretation. So a term that has, again, no official definition, so it could, could take it in any direction you want, but many professionals believe it implies this way of eating is somehow more virtuous, um, that somehow other food is dirty and therefore bad. So we need to be careful with that and using that term. Um, that making other people feel like if they are not buying organic food or they're not buying um, food that's not in a box or a package, that it is considerably better than the other. We know there's definitely better choices, uh, but we do have to be careful with that. So again, the term encourages that all or nothing kind of thinking about food um, and might even contribute to an overall fear of food. And that would interfere with other people trying to, trying to eat healthily. So still the idea, though, is powerful for many, and some dietitians do embrace the clean eating on their own terms. So I did, included five of, my, of the ones that I most highly would agree with in terms of what a definition of clean eating is, and I, I would agree these would be to me as well. So once that clean eating is eating foods where nothing helpful has been taken away and nothing harmful has been added. Pretty simple, pretty basic. Um, also, clean eating simply means eating with micronutrient and macronutrient goals in mind with as much variety as possible without restrictions. So again, not an extreme dieting technique, but improving your eating habits so you're not over-consuming foods that are heavily processed and that are stripped of the nutrients. 
So really thinking about uh, what your body needs, the proteins, the carbohydrates, the fats, the macronutrients, and keeping those in mind. Another definition was clean eating is when I see all the ingredients I'm eating. So for example, a lunch of grilled salmon over salad with lots of veggies as opposed to a bowl of processed macaroni and cheese where I cannot pronounce the ingredients on the list. Another one said, clean eating means eating food I know will benefit my health, mind, and body, and sometimes including a piece of dark chocolate or a glass of red wine, but again, all balanced with physical activity. So we'll have moderation in there, but other components of looking at foods that might have more phytonutrients to them and including them in the diet as well, which even in a large quantity, chocolate and red wine would not be a good thing, but in small amounts, acceptable. And then the last one I wanted to include was clean eating is about power washing your diet. So strip away the clutter and enjoy the clean taste of a crispy apple, a juicy tomato, or a nutty brown rice. So just getting back to basics to whole foods, what foods really do taste like. And one good comparison is green beans in a can versus frozen green beans. There's a huge difference in what their taste is. So again, it's more of what you're grown up on or accustomed to and trying to get back to clean eating again and, and having um, closer to nature, I guess I would say. So in some of the research, looking at what a downside to clean eating might be, and I did mention a little bit about this, about making people feeling inadequate um, if they're not eating clean eating um, in everything that they're consuming. Um, sometimes also, again, it's that all or nothing, so people think that if they're not doing it all the way, then their, their type of food choices are maybe not as good or the foods they purchase are not as good. Um, so we know perfection does not exist and we have to be realistic about the food choices that we make. So a lot of Americans are already scared to cook. One in five Americans spend less than 15 minutes cooking dinner on an average day. So we've got packaged foods, we know that they're helpful to us. They save us time in the kitchen. Um, you don't have to have a high level of skill in cooking to use some of these packaged foods. Um, also, they can fill nutritional gaps. Um, some available like whole grain pasta, canned vegetables, all of those are processed in some form or another. They're definitely healthy choices to choose from. So looking at the ingredient list is the key. So as long as it's mostly made of whole foods, it still would be a good choice. So typically, people look for minimally processed foods, but then again, you could translate into buying whole foods, but also looking at foods that have shorter ingredient lists. Uh, the one exception to that would be if you're looking at the ingredient list of a really good homemade or um, vegetable soup. The list could be extremely long, but every ingredient there could be a whole ingredient. So it's more about quality than quantity. Because we do use that phase, you know, the shorter the ingredient list, the better it is. Not always. So you really need to look at what is the quality of what's in that ingredient list to make your determination if it's a good choice or not. So it's great. More people are looking to eat less of things that we don't want in our diet, but it's also, again, to make people not feel bad if they're eating out of a bag or a box. So we know frozen vegetables come out of a bag, and we know because of them being processed in terms of being grown at peak time and blanched and frozen, that they retain a lot more of their nutrients than the vegetables that were picked that sat in a truck and then sat in the store and then you purchased it on the shelf and then it sat in the refrigerator. So a lot of those water-soluble vitamins may not be in those foods anymore and the lower contents of them, whereas the frozen ones have retained all those nutrients. So in that case, frozen can be better too. So what's trending in nutrition? We talked about you know the clean eating, but also when it comes to the messages and things that impact people's shopping decisions, people are looking for these words free from. So we're looking at these claims of that it's GMO or genetically modified um, free, um, antibiotic free, additive free, or if it's locally sourced. And then using all these things are important to people, um, most people, and other people when they're shopping, making their purchasing decisions. So the demand for cleaner food has drove the manufacturer's decisions to remove a lot of these ingredients um, that aren't necessary in their foods or finding alternatives, but then they're also putting it on their labels and using that for advertising. You know, that's a really key hitter, putting it on the front of their label um, and being kind of in your face that, hey, hey, we don't have this in our food to try and entice you to buy it, but there is exceptions to those rules and you do definitely have to read the package and not just focus on the front of the package because 
as, as we try to teach children when they're looking at a package in the cereal aisle and it's got their favorite cartoon character on it, it's an advertisement, it's a commercial. It's wanting you to buy that cereal. It doesn't mean it's healthy for you or it's nutritious, so you really have to turn to the back of the box, look at that nutrition facts label, read those ingredients, make sure you know what is in there, identifying all those products. So looking at a report that was done in May of 2015, they found that 84% of consumers are buying products with that free from claims on there. So they want more natural, less processed foods. So 84% that filled out this survey. Um, also trans fat free was most important to 78% of purchasers. 71% looked first for it being preservative free. So whether it be for a child that has allergies or just being very concerned about that, 71%. Sodium free ranked number one for 57% of consumers. And foods free from GMOs also ranked in the top four most important considerations. So they are looking at all of those things. Um, also, people that are concerned with the planet or animal welfare, they're into their buying decisions. That's all being affected by that as well. They're looking for free range, for cage free, um, looking for that for chicken and when they're buying their eggs and that type of stuff. So being mindful of all that. All those are being the top of consumers' concerns. I touched a little bit about our organic. Um, so it could be included in the clean eating discussion or not. Um, we know typically they're free from pesticides, hormones, and GMOs because they're using more natural um, herbicides and those type of things in, in what's in the environment. Um, and not necessarily <coughs> they are going to be free from allergens or gluten or other ingredients that could impact health. So you have to consider that as well. So just because it's organic doesn't mean that you're trying to cut back on um, something you're allergic to and die. It doesn't mean it's not, you know, some of those things aren't going to be in there. It would be an organically certified product that would be in there. So you can eat clean foods from all the food groups, although fruits and vegetables would obviously be the base of your clean eating pyramid. So looking at the free from labels, I'm looking at uh, just like in the 1980s, there was that big craze for lower cholesterol or cholesterol free. So we're again seeing foods that have that label on there um, and looking at it as being exceptional. So again, we have to be good consumers and mindful and look at those labels. Um, we don't want them to give a, looking at that free from label, giving us a false impression. Sometimes people think, oh, well, it's got that free from and they suddenly put a healthy halo over the top of that food and think, well, that's a good choice, and then they eat as much of it as they want. You can eat too much of a good thing, so they have to be careful in terms of that free from food as being a trigger doesn't necessarily mean that it's healthy. Another pitfall is avoiding particular food components, so that can cause an unbalance in your diet. So um, you might be very limiting on some of the nutrients that you need because you're avoiding a certain food. Um, also, if we merely focus our findings on the free from something, we may miss on the health promoting options of many other foods and again, lose out on the whole joy of eating. We're being overly focused on some of those things and missing out the whole point of, you know, some foods are meant to be just enjoyed in moderation. So eating more whole and minimally processed foods are the dietary recommendations. So looking at that, being in line with the dietary guidelines, so focusing on the overall diet, as well as people eating more plant-based is following the long lines of Mediterranean and the DASH or the dietary approaches to stop hypertension diet. So following along those lines gets into eating more plant-based, more clean, that type of thing. So a diet rich in these whole foods is going to be very nourishing, but also unrealistic to expect that we're going to not utilize any packaged or processed foods. And I'll talk a little bit more about that, um, again, in terms of the freezing, the drying, pasteurizing. So that could be very limiting if you do avoid all processed foods. Um, so many of the foods that we do eat have been processed in one form or another. So washing, cutting, removing the inedible parts, peeling, are all forms of processing. So at what degree? So we're talking about minimally processed, um, in most cases. So freezing, drying, pasteurizing, and fermenting can also be minimal forms of processing. So you have to keep that in mind. So to be a completely processed-free diet would eliminate quite a, quite a bit of food and food options for you. So however, the more processed the food, the higher the likelihood that helpful ingredients have been replaced with extra sugar or extra fat or extra calories or chemical preservatives <coughs> or flavorings. So being more conscious about that and choosing the minimally processed, less processed, to ensure that you're not getting that extra stuff. So I did want to include some 10 rules of clean eating, so I'll give you some things to think about. 
So the first one is approaching your meals as a lifestyle. So we don't like to always think about um, clean eating as being a diet. Anybody's on a diet at any given time. It's just what one eats is what a diet means. So hopefully looking at it as something that you can make changes that you can live with and you can move forward with. So not a fat loss diet, but a lifestyle change. Yet many people have been very successful at attempting more of a cleaner eating diet because they're taking out all of the, the extra candy and sugar and soda and cookies and cakes and things that they normally would think too much about, but eating frequently by taking that out of their diet, they are successful with weight loss. So you don't need to get obsessive about it, throw everything out that you love, but again, everything in moderation, um, but trying to get that nice balance there. And, you know, maybe doing more cooking for yourself and less eating out to be more aware of what's in your food. Two, load up on fresh produce. So again, no matter if people are trying to cut carbs or carb loaders or you hear the paleo warriors or the intermittent faster, the golden rule of clean eating, including as much fresh produce in their daily diet as possible. So that seems to be one that holds steady for no matter what type of a diet a person is trying to follow, and especially with clean eating. Stay in the perimeter of the grocery store. So most of the wholesome foods, or whole foods, are going to be all on the outskirts of the store and less in the middle aisles. So more of your processed foods are going to be in those center aisles. Um, some other things also, like nuts and dried fruits and things, might be in bins, and they might be uh, in the middle parts of the store as well, as so you might have to, um, depending on your store, venture into some of those. And some of your staples, your whole grain rice, you know, that type of thing, whole pasta, if you're going to go those routes as well. And some of your staples, like olive oil, um, but all those things can be found in all grocery stores. Number four, eliminate added sugars. So foods in the most natural state, as we talked about, um, containing added sugar. So we're not talking about eliminating fruit, which has natural fruit sugar. We're talking about the added sugar things. Um, so you can eat fruit, you can eat those types of things, but you know, the extra um, fruit beverages or you know, sodas, things that have the extra sugar added to them. Number five, drink more water. That's the key. So really keep yourself hydrated. Hydrated muscles grow and perform at a higher level and better at protecting your body against breakdown. So it's very important to 